The second phase of Unreconciled Stars event has begun in Genshin Impact. This event phase starts off with another quest mission with Fischl and brings in Mona for a ride too and then unlocks the new Meteorite Remains cell with challenges that you need to use resin for. And this is your first mission to complete to get your free Fischl as you need to achieve 14 salvage completions as one of the three tasks of Princessin's Pact. And a lot more primo jumps await during the second phase too, however be careful about doing the salvage event in multiplayer as people are reporting kind of an issue there. But before we get into the details of all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Genshin Impact news and coverage. Anyways, start of deceitful dreams, I'm honestly glad this feels more like an event, I said this during phase 1 too, but phase 2 certainly has a little bit more to do rather than just roaming around collecting meteorites, although it does require resin this time around. You first do the relatively short quest to start up phase 2 and I'm really glad to see the events feel like a proper official character quest at this point. It also seems like it is aiming to bring more characters into the mix, so far most character quests have been quite isolated in comparison, but here it feels grander with more characters joining in in this second phase. Anyways, after the chill quest which already gives 60 primo on its own, you will once again unlock 3 new world quests in the meteoric wave, rewarding 40 each, so 120 total. And you will also unlock the meteorite salvage missions in Star of Deceitful Dreams. These require you to complete up to a total of 30 salvages, granting 180 primo gems total. It does feel a bit stingy getting two additional pulls only from phase 2, but I'd like to remind you that the gacha of Genshin is more long term collection oriented like Fate Grand Order, where your pulls have at least some meaning rather than the traditional power creep gacha systems of many mobile games that force you into new units every other week. Now, the locations of these salvage zones are highlighted for you by Mona already, so they are easy to find and feature multiple difficulties as well, granting higher rewards for higher difficulties. Once you complete all the ones Mona has mapped out, you can simply talk to her again to get a refresh on locations, but there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. First off, the base mechanic of the salvage event itself. The first tutorial one makes it very clear in text, but you never realize how soul crushing it is until you actually experience the catch. You see, there's a zone around the meteorite and your objective is to kill monsters while staying in there to fill up a gauge. If you step outside the circle, you'll start losing progress and you lose it very fast. It can take up to a minute to destroy a particularly annoying enemy, but just step outside of the circle for 5 seconds and you'll simply lose all progress before you can realize you're even losing it. This gets particularly nasty for agile characters who move a lot during their attacks, catching loves teleporting for the final auto attack combo, but more often than not, this will cause you to step out of bounds momentarily. The enemies are a big problem here as well, for example, cryo slimes are programmed to generally stay away from you after you deplete their shield, with how small the circle is they'll often run out of bounds making it incredibly unfavorable to chase after them specifically. Equally annoying are the ranged enemies, especially those water mage hilly trolls that cast healing. It appears they have them purposefully programmed to spawn outside of the circle to begin with. You can take them out at 0% progression and then bum rush everything else inside the circle to complete it before new ones spawn, which appears to be the best way to handle it if you ask me. Even if you have ranged characters to deal with them, it sure isn't optimal as they are placed in annoying places and are not one-shotable. So shoot them once to stagger with an arrow, they'll fall down behind cover outside of the allowed zone and they will force you to move out of your circle and cause you to very likely lose pretty much all your progress. In my opinion, the major problem here is specifically the circle size itself, it's just that small of an area just doesn't mix well with the normal AI behavior. If it was only slightly bigger, it would actually start feeling fun rather than frustrating whenever a ranged enemy comes up. But there are two things that will make it a little bit easier for you. First off, the meteor casts elemental energy every once in a while while empowering the mobs. If you get rid of that elemental energy with an appropriate reaction, the mobs will become weaker and thus easier to handle. It is a recurring wave so they'll get the energy back from the meteor every once in a while, so just check the energy type of the meteor and what's afflicted on the mob, if they are the same element, cause a reaction, take it out. 
Secondly, some characters get a massive 60% damage boost during these salvages, so if you got any of these characters ready for combat or almost ready, get them leveled and geared up and prioritize using them. Worst case, I would recommend just taking artifacts from your mains and temporarily giving it to them to boost them up to an acceptable fighting level. These characters are, for Hydro you got Tartalia, Kilde and Mona, for Electro you got Fischl, Lisa and Beidou, for Geo you got Ningguang and Noel, for Cryo you got Chongyun and for Pyro you got Shangling. All of these will do 60% more damage and are recommended to be used in this event unless you really not have them combat ready yet. Sadly for a majority of them that is kind of the case with me so I'm bum rushing with my catching but I'll get at least one or two of them combat ready until Friday to take advantage of the boost. Regarding multiplayer, a lot of people are reporting that only one person can receive rewards when doing the salvages co-op and I have to say that may end up being intended. Salvage does not have an inherent matchmaking functionality, so when you do this in co-op you are basically joining someone else's world instance and are basically doing nothing more than quote unquote helping them. The actual multiplayer portion of the event should arrive in the third phase, Star of Destiny arriving in 4 days, that's also when you'll be able to start collecting the high tier event currency that will get you the crown of sagehood for level 10 talent upgrades. But that's it for today, if you found this video helpful, please do leave a like and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Genshin Impact content and news. Consider becoming a channel member or a patron to support what I do here, and of course, thank you very much to all my channel members and patrons, I'll see you all next time, until then, stay cool travelers.